we are Steve and Jill. Together, we've been buying and reselling land since the 90s. Our data-centric approach leaves our buyers asking, how can you sell it so cheap? Here on the Land Academy Show. We answer that and more. I'm Stephen Jack Butella. And I'm Jill DeWitt, and this is the Land Academy Show. Today, we're going to talk about a couple of things. Number one, the three things it takes to succeed at buying and selling land. And I'm going to give you a hint about my three. Jill's got three. I've got three. We haven't seen we each other's. We didn't share. <laughs> yeah. Mine have nothing to do with the actual basic skills of, of buying and selling land. Same here. Really? We actually agree on that. That's going to be really interesting. And then a little later. It's not uh, like you have, you know, I'll give you one hint on mine too. Mine does not have anything to do with buying and selling land. And it doesn't have anything to do with how much money you have. The same thing. Uh -huh. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Uh-huh. And then a little uh, while later in the episode, we'll talk about how to avoid land due diligence paralysis. We've all heard of uh, analysis, analysis paralysis. paralysis. I think this is an offshoot of that. Totally. Each week on the show, we answer questions from our Land Academy uh, member Discord forum. We review land acquisitions from our weekly member webinars, and we take a deep dive into two land-related topics by popular request. If mm -hmm. you would like a sneak peek, of our Discord forum, go to landacademy.com. It's free. And don't forget, if this is interesting to you, you want to talk to my team, or you want some tips on getting started, just send us a note to support at landacademy.com. All right, here's our question. Paul wrote, hi, new member here in the corrupt state of Illinois. Oh, I no. have to share that. That is kind of funny. <laughs> I like him already. I wonder what, like, I have my own version of what I call my former home state. But anyway. We'll get to that in a second. Yeah, well, well anyway, my wife and I are retired <laughs> engineers. And I speak Excel fluently. I love that. So I'm definitely the data guy. I'm also a member under another mentor where I've learned a lot, but I realize he's only done a few deals and Jack and Jill are here crushing it in real time. So I'm jumped on this opportunity. So this again, this is in Discord. He wrote to the community. Recently, um, recently, really, really recently. This is good. One difference in training is the other program had, had a sending neutral letters saying that if you want to sell your land, please call. I got less than 10 responses from 1,500 letters. That's shocking. Mm -hmm. um, Jack and Jill have us send an offer in the initial letter, which seems much better to me. Especially Although as data people. Although I haven't mailed people. anything yet. So what response rates are you all getting? So I love this. You know, it's funny. I have to say, first of all, it's amazing to me because in a neutral letter, like, hey, I want to buy your house. What the responses I have heard, because I've never done this, because this is kind of not, this is nuts, because this is what happens. Because <laughs> this is nuts. This is nuts. Because if someone, if, if like even right now, if someone sent me a note right now and said, I'd like to buy your home, and I would say, well, congratulations, you can have it for $8 million. Mm -hmm. That's my make me move number. And that's what you're going to get. Everybody has a make me move number. Come on, let's be honest. Even if you inherited your family home that's been in your family for 110 years, you'd be like, well, yeah, if someone offered that, heck, I would move and start all over. It's, yeah, I'd get over it. <laughs> Neutral letters generate noise. Yeah. And Offers, we don't, we send offer letters out, generate interested sellers. Right. We generate deals, and not ang conversations. Some of the interested <laughs> sellers are might be angry in the beginning, but yeah. what ends up happening is you work that out. Yeah. I love it. Okay, so here's the deal. And I'll get to your, uh, to directly answer your question. What response rates are, are you seeing? Um, geez, what everybody wrote, if, right? Did you? Oh, everybody piped in here, but I'll place. take in a second. I'll tell you. You can expect to, if the planets are aligned, um, buy a property for every 1,500 letters that you send out uh, on the, if everything, you chose the right area, the plant, and you know, if that's if that's best case. Uh, if you're really good at this, it might be a little bit better. And then on the top end, it might take uh, up to 10,000 letters to actually receive a, um, a, sign, a deal that you're going to do, let's Depending say. Depending on the numbers. But hey, doing. it costs about five grand to send out 10,000 letters, and you should be making forty to $50,000 a deal. So it's insignificant. Mailer yield is a big topic here, and I'm glad you asked the question. Um, but after you get that first $40,000, $50,000 net deal under your belt, you're going to never enter your mind again. 
Well, especially because what really happens, Paul, is you get one deal, it pays for the mail, you're like, okay. And then you don't even realize that, you know, six months down the road, you just got three more deals from that old mailer. Yeah. You're like, oh, it's yeah. tough to calculate. I forgot that was really from that mailer. So how do I now do this? And and again, like like uh, Jack just said, you you're so past caring. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> Here's my point to including this question because there's tons of questions in Discord from new people. Just just a lot of questions in there from all people, all Ma Land Academy members. Mm -hmm. My wife and I are retired engineers. Yay! Huge big green check mark in the left column. You know. Number one, we speak Excel fluently. Number two, second big green light. Can I say why? A, you're retired, you have the time, and B, you're smart cookies. You're in the right place. And you're engineers. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean with the smart. Excel, experience. Number three, we, we are part of another program, not satisfied. Big third huge green check mark. Why am yeah. I doing this? Why Got am some I? stuff out of the way, tested it. Why, why am I going through this? Because if you fit this profile, other listeners, mm -hmm. this is a, the place for you. Mm -hmm. And I'm not selling anything. You, this is really the place for you. Because by the time the Sarah's enrollment is closed. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Literally not selling anything yet. You can still call my team, but we generally right cap now. our uh, huh. membership at 500 people. Yeah. And so we're either plus five or 10% of that almost all the time. Yeah. And so I'm glad you guys made it in. Yeah. If you're brand new at this and you're wondering what it's like to be wealthy, because these two people already know what it's like to be mm -hmm. wealthy, they're retired engineers. If you're wondering what it's like to be wealthy, this is not the place for you. Yeah. I can't say it more clearly. You can go to one of those other groups. There's lots of them. They all used to be, with one exception, Land Academy members. Yeah. Everybody who's out teaching this, they're former Land Academy members. Mm -hmm. Do your homework. So just <laughs> by the way math, general arithmetic works, they cannot have had as much experience as we do. I'm not, I'm not selling anything and I'm not blowing my own horn. I'm just stating facts. So welcome you engineers. You are, you fit the profile perfectly and I cannot wait to get to know you on the Thursday call and see how you, how well you do at this. If you guys need anything, please reach out to me uh, personally on the discord mm -hmm. and, you know, friend me and I'm happy to help in any way. Perfect profile for this. I have a funny question for you. Have you ever considered joining somebody else's program for any reason at all? I am actually a member. No, no, of, no, no. Oh. In our space, not oh. of other things. Like, I'm well aware of some of the personal development things, and I'm a fan that. <laughs> Just a big fan of my personal development. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Every time he gets a book in the mail, I'm like, yes. <laughs> yes. Is your wife like this too? Like... She gets really excited every time I go to the doctor, even just for a checkup. She's just, women, like, wives love when their men are on some path that's productive, not destructive. Like, yes. If I go to the bar on Friday and I say, I'll see, you know, I'll, I'll see you later. That's not, that's destructive. We don't want you in a downward spiral. We want you in an upward healthy spiral. So when you're, when you're, you know, but the funny, so again, those other programs aside, <laughs> Let's just say. Oh my God, he got a new shirt. My life's going to change. Yes. That kind of stuff happens yeah, in, our, that's in, actually our, true. in our house. <laughs> that's actually very true. <laughs> Maybe if I throw away all these and he only has three left that I approve of, he'll get the hint. <laughs> <laughs> Not a new car though. Oh my God, he brought home another car from the 60s. Oh, actually, my life's going to dramatically be reduced. What it's just human nature. Yeah. Well, Why is that? I don't know. Because anyway, it creates a little bit of work. <laughs> It work and worry. <laughs> anyway, what were you saying? So my point is, I just think it's kind of funny, though. Really, when what a what a true compliment to us that that uh, ninety nine point nine percent of anybody in our space has been involved with us, and and you know, I wish there were more of them that this was their own idea, but it wasn't. But anyway, I just it's it's still kind of a compliment. Every now and then I even see in social media people like directly comp like copying verbatim what we call things. I'm like, that's cute. That's kind of funny. Well, it actually in the end works out great for us yeah. because uh, whoever they attract and recruit finds out pretty, the right people just like these two. They get to the end. These two engineers. They find these us. two engineers realize there's something more. Yeah. And so they weed themselves out. A brand new person who's just trying to figure out how to get wealthy isn't going to see the difference between Jill and I and uh, 
fill in the blank. Well, so my, my whole question was to you this, is that we're always trying to better ourselves. I'm a huge fan of education, and but getting the right education, you know what I mean? And uh, I know you are too, and I've never, I just thought it was kind of funny that, I'm like, yeah, I've never been in anybody else's thing because I don't know what I would gain. But other groups I am involved in, there's stuff I will gain, and I love showing up to, like data stuff. I love getting involved in those kind of talks and things. So anyway. I always wonder if, what the profile is of the per, the first the first time listener of this show. Look, we're almost 2,000 episodes into this. Mm-hmm. We have a pretty good cult following. But there's always probably every show a few new people mm-hmm. that only last, I don't know, three minutes in this. Like, who the heck are these If you guys? haven't deleted and <laughs> dropped off like, now, I'd love to know. I'd love to know. <laughs> thanks, Grandpa, for your advice. That's what yeah. they're saying. <laughs> All right. Today's first topic, the three things that it takes to succeed at buying and selling land. Jill and I have separate lists. I would like you to go first. All right. Do you want me to list all three or one at a time? Or? Sure. So am I going to do all my three and then you're going to do all your three? Yeah, but I think they're going to overlap. I just have a gut feeling. So we'll just take it how it goes. All right. My first one is humility. Wow. This shocks me. I like that. And this my is middle, me. I'm this from is, Detroit. My middle name is Humility. Jill's <laughs> from Disneyland, literally. And so this shocks me. I know. Doesn't mean I'm good at it. <laughs> it's just it's that. That's what I think you need. So here's here's like the truth. Like right when I sat down 15 minutes ago and he's like, I look at the topic. He's like, write things down. I'm like, okay. So this is, this, I just like, you know, sometimes that's your best. I'm like, all right, what are the top three? This, this, this. Why humility? I just grab that. Fascinating. Because you need to come at this knowing you don't know it all. The best people have come at this from just like Paul. He is a pro at being an engineer. Whatever kind of engineer Mm -hmm. he and his wife are, they have that nailed. He could walk in with like a big head saying, oh, I'm so smart out of my way, right? But no, he's taking on education, joining a group, asking questions. That's humility and that's the right kind. Like I know what I know over here, but I don't know everything I need mm-hmm. to know about this. Well, you constantly have to learn. I mm-hmm. mean, there's just that's there's it. no other way about everything in life. That's it. You're either going to be a better husband as time goes on or not. Yep. You know, and that does probably is not going to happen on accident. It certainly doesn't happen with me. And I promise you and because I've seen this now, God, we're going on nine years of Land Academy, not kidding. I've watched in the group, the most successful people show up, not every Thursday, but they're there enough. And they're in the community, you know, maybe not 24 seven, I don't want you to do that, but they're there. And I promise you, if you're showing up and you're asking questions like, and there's, and you just, even if you're a fly on the wall, boy, there's nuggets of just quality stuff that drop every day and every week on our, our call. I, you know, I, I hear it. I hear people going, you know, just the other day in career path, you know, someone said, ding, ding, that was it. That was it for me. That yeah. was the cost of the price of admission. I just yeah, got it. You're absolutely That right. was my light bulb moment. So you have to come at this, you know, with humility, knowing that, um, and that's why you're here. Come on, this guy's been doing these deals since the 90s. We didn't make this up. We're not brand new at this. I don't have 100 deals saying, oh, I can show you how to do it. No, since the 90s. Um, and and you'd be nuts not to take a step back and go, all right, I, they probably know what they're talking about. They do have 16, almost 17,000 transactions to discuss, you know, that they've completed. This, you know, I thought about this earlier today too. That spreadsheet is probably still floating out on the planet somewhere because we used to post that. When yeah, we the launched, actual deals. When we launched Land Academy, just so you know, we had a, a I don't know how many page PDF file because we were saying we wanted to very, you know, have proof to support that we have done this many transactions. Because the riot. So we did. So so Jack here <laughs> had an attachment that you could off our website. Go and download. I'm a former a accountant, PDF so I file. believe in like backing and, and source documents and all of that. And boy, and thumb was... through. It was state, <laughs> county, APN, like legal description, bought, sold, and dates. Like it was that. And it's like, not kidding. These are our deals. You don't believe me? Look them up. And so it's kind of, it's probably still out there somewhere. But anyway, my point is 
have have some humility and be a sponge to what we're trying to help you with because that's the end of the that's the goal here i'm not here to that ties in perfectly to all of this because these two engineers um mm-hmm. by the way this has got to be an endless source of jokes for you <laughs> like two in, two married oh, engineers who are is, retired what's dinner like at sit, that house sit down to dinner <laughs> There's like 50 things like, wow. Do they even talk? My fork's in the wrong place. Why is what my meat, my potatoes are touching my meat. I'm like, is it even talking? Is there like no words? I could see like no words, eat, get up and leave. (laughs) (laughs) Go down in the basement. I kind of want to know, Paul, you guys got to tell us. I do too. Go down in the basement and work on what you've been working on. Your entire career to oh. like gonna save the world somehow. Well, wait a minute. They sit down at exactly eighteen hundred hours, <laughs> by the way, and they leave at eighteen eighteen hundred hours because that's all it should take. And one does the dishes every other day. Yep, and it's, it's everything's in a system. Totally, and there's no talking about it. I can imagine the whole house is no words. <laughs> guys, there's just clocks you everywhere. You guys are gonna smash it. And they're all digital. Jill's a. <laughs> Jill's a. a Air, you know, an airplane pilot, and I'm a recovering accountant, so that's a lot. She knows all this because this is what our life is like, pretty much. Oh my gosh, yes. Humility. Number yeah. two. Okay, number two. Um, tenacity. These are. This is good stuff, Joe. You like this? So you know what, man? If you can't roll with the punches, you're not going to make it at anything. So we're talking about today the three things it takes. You know to do our business but if you in case you haven't picked up on the theme by now it applies to kind of everything so gosh land is no different what we do every day is no different you need to roll with the punches and you need to man just just take what's coming at you and solve it that's that's really my thing Every day, there's going to be something. You're going to send out a mailer and you priced it wrong. You're going to send out a mailer and your phone number is wrong. You're going to do something and your website's not working. You're going to you're going to forget to follow through and a closing's not going to go like you planned. I don't know. Dream it up. So things are going to happen if you can't uh, just recover and fix it and move on and make it better every time you're not going to make it humility and tenacity mm-hmm. you ready for my third one yeah yeah for sure do you want to ask about tenacity a little bit i think well i think tenacity is absolutely imperative but i think mm-hmm. it's um kind of putting it lightly mm-hmm. you know that's uh, but, but i'll cover that in mind because tenacity is covered in mind but it's very different but you know, I was telling you the story. I don't know where it falls under. If it falls under tenacity or my or my third point here, where we were talking this morning in the kitchen over coffee, um, and that's when Stephen's like, "Oh, this is our topic today." And you know the story I'm about to share. I'm like, you know what? This is what people don't realize. We lived in a mansion on the beach, and you know what? I was still giving up a Saturday night to stay home and take phone calls from sellers when a mailer hit because it was Saturday night and I was the only one that was available. I could have done Pat Live, but I didn't want to. I'm like, I needed this to go well. Were you upset about it? No. This is what I'm saying. No. It wasn't a job for you. I sent him away. I said, you know what, babe? I'm actually excited. This is my life. I don't care. And you know what? That's not going to forever be like that. It's not every Saturday night. But to give up a Saturday night and say, babe, you go have fun with our friends. I don't care. I I, I need to and I want to answer these phone calls because I know what's going to come of it. It's going to afford the next whatever we want or just, you know, life. These first two that Jill has taps right into my number one. So I'm going to say it. Okay. You from the top of your head to the bottom of your toes need to be consumed and obsessed and make a commitment to succeed at this and it's not buying it just buying and selling land it's whatever you do in your life i don't think that it's an accident that two retired married engineers who took a a land course decided that it's not that that they want some more Mm -hmm. and that they're going to go into this taking it lightly they didn't take being engineers lightly if they did they wouldn't be retired right they didn't take each other lightly or they if they did they wouldn't be together you have to make a commitment. In fact, at this age, it should be an. You should be saying to everything that Joe and I are saying on this show, and probably a lot of episodes. Duh, 
What? I mean, are, does this really, do you really have to say this out loud? I took a picture a couple of years ago. We were at a beach in, in an RV and, and there's big, big pictures posted all over that said, don't walk on the hot coals. To which I, I sent it out on the internet, on the on social media. I'm like, do we need, in this world, do we need a sign like that? It is kind of funny. <laughs> it's not like, it hey, kind of hey, be, hey, beware. There, this there's uh, this beach a lot a public beach allows um, f- fires you mm-hmm. know campfires so please please just know that no that's not what it said don't walk on hot coals that's something you should probably learn in before kindergarten that's so funny it's like if you drive fast and you hit something it's gonna hurt <laughs> really <laughs> you have to make um, you either go about through life just consumed or obsessed with whatever you're trying to accomplish at the time or you don't yeah. the greatest example that I, i've said this on the air before in distant past i'll say it again yeah. the greatest example i have uh, is of the the drummer for the band rush neil pert who recently passed away in the week that he passed away he was he was taking drum lessons he, he's arguably the best rock drummer there ever, ever has ever lived ever i mean elite for sure the top five maybe ten anybody you ask and he's taking drum lessons you know, in, in, at that age. That's commitment. Yep. It's impressive. Yep. So your number one is the Top to bottom commit. commitment. Yeah, I believe that. I don't care what age you are, Really by obsession. The way. Don't, don't uh, do anything you're not committed to. Why would you? That's what I think. So it's very natural for <laughs> yeah. me to glom on to this and just do all the research. And, yeah. and there's other stuff in my in my. Jill, are whining, Jill and I are winding our careers down here together at the I same time. I thought you said time. whining. <laughs> Jill and I are whining today. Well, that's true, Winding. Too. Winding down our... And so <laughs> hobbies are slowly taking over my uh, work life, my professional life. And, and I'm noticing that I'm... This is not true of Jill, by the way. <laughs> I'm uh, obsessing on stuff and Jill's obsessing on spa days and as yeah, you Yeah, I'm should. obsessing on doing nothing <laughs> for a little bit. As you should. But I am working on my little quiet pottery shop I'd like to have. <laughs> I might be taking some pottery classes. In the history of pottery shops, this will be in, included in the non-for-profit pottery shop. <laughs> oh, it's only for me. It is 100% a hobby. Like, it'll be fun. All right, do you want to do your number three? You want to get to my number three? Yeah, Okay, three. so my number three, so I have humility, tenacity, and my last one is drive. So it kind of goes with your your number one. Man, there's gonna be like everything. I don't care what you're working on. There's gonna be days you're gonna wake up and not be into it. And that's normal and that's fine, but you gotta get up and do it. You know, I was um I was uh complimenting our sweet Carl Lathis as I was thinking of this. I'm like, Carl said something to us, you know, months ago maybe a year ago, he's like, I knew when I was 20 something and starting these companies that I may not have known what I was doing. I may not have been the best at this or best at that, but I knew that I would outwork anyone. Yep. I would be there. I'd be, and I said, I believe that to be true. Jill, you're like that. Yeah. Jill, you, Jill works harder than That's I do. That's the truth. True. <laughs> I didn't mean that. I'm like, have. I'm that way. Not no, that I it's work not. harder than you. It's a huge compliment. Yeah. No, I won't stop. I'm going to make, I'm going to, yeah. I don't know how to stop. I'm going to make it, if I commit to it, um, I have that drive and you need drive. You need to find it within yourself because you have to stay motivated. I don't care what it is. You can't. And that, cause if you're not, it's not worth your time, you know? So for me, I reward myself and that's how I kind of push myself forward, um, with, with drive um, and staying on track. So whatever it is for you, what is it for you? If you're driven to do something, is it because you want to be the best at it no. or this is a good question. It's yeah. kind of off topic here, but it I'm doesn't curious. matter. It's the same, same what topic. Is yours? I am very, very driven by two things, money mm-hmm. okay, and being done. So, so bank balance and efficiency kind of yeah efficiency slash like let's let's it's a, maybe it's an accounting thing it, you know it's the end of the month mm-hmm. the numbers are back in that month is done it's finished and okay great i've just bought a piece of land it's up for sale it went under contract just just about to be done 
just little wins and just finishing and finishing stuff and then starting something and finishing it again. You know, Land Academy is going to end at some point. You know, <gasps> and I know, <laughs> and I know what that looks like. And uh, Jill, I haven't shared this with Jill, but like I'm finishing years. stuff, <laughs> I'm finishing stuff is like I cannot have. We have a bunch of cars. I can't sleep if one of them doesn't start. That's true. It just has to be finished. And so finishing a real estate deal is incredibly satisfactory. I understand. That's what drives me. Like, so it's, it's look, looking great in a new pair of jeans doesn't enter my mind. I say this because we just went to a baseball game and it's shocking to me how important it is the way people dress up and stuff. I don't, I don't get it. That, and, the, and you know what? That's, that's the root of your question. What drives you? For whatever reason, there's a huge number of people that go to public events and they're very interested in how they look. I'm trying to, I'm trying to tie, tie those together and I'm struggling. I don't know. Whatever drives them, it's not money uh, and it's not finishing something. It's like who, how many views they got. Or but you know what's funny about is. the drive thing though? I got to say this. It's not like you go, well, I'm done. And then you're just done. No, you start something else. That's true. So there's, it's, there's it's usually a bigger mess. Yeah, that's my point. And so you're always that. driven and working on something. So drive is just in you. Is it nature or nurture? I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. What about you? I mean, what you already said it, didn't you? Yeah. I get I give myself I'm driven. You know, I'm kind of driven the same way. I like um accomplishment and rewards. You know, I don't know. But and I think, you know, honestly, I think it's I think it's nature, more nature than nurture. Because Lord knows people in my family are not that way. That's true. I can vouch for that. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. So my number one is, you know, top to bottom commitment. Right. And just truly like obsession is really probably a better word. I like obsession. But a commitment and an obsession are, I think obsession is a, a more acute form of commitment. So we talked about that. Number two is basic common sense. That's good. And this came about because Jill and I, again, we're talking in the kitchen about, we did actually brought this up for in career path a couple of days ago yesterday. If you're driving down the street or driving down the freeway, all of us have done some version of this. It's probably why you're listening to this podcast. And you say, and you see land for sale, $30,000 and then a phone number. What's the first thing you think of? I took, I like wonder what they paid. That's what I thought. The first thing that I think of is, well, what's it worth? You know, right. you're asking 30, I'm gonna be the judge of what it's worth. And so it's, it's either worth 30 or 20, or 40 right and so and then and then there's the number of what am i willing to pay for it so that's common sense right i don't see that a lot in certain places uh actually within land academy and in the planet i don't see applying common sense to this like why are you even doing this what happens with super super new people is they they say okay this guy wants 30. I'm gonna to try to make that work. I'm gonna look at this deal. I'm gonna take this deal and twist it around and look at it and roll around in it and, and take that apple and look at it 15 different ways and try to see if I see 30 in there. That's not common sense. That's, that's a personality disorder. Mm -hmm. You need to look at the deal from a common sense standpoint. I wanna get into the deal. I'm gonna pay some money. I'm gonna convert some, some of the cash that I have into real estate. Then I'm gonna convert it back out into a higher dollar amount than I put in. Mm -hmm. as quickly as possible with the least amount of effort. That's common sense to me. It, it's not satisfying some other need that I have to be like a real estate investor and talk about it. Mm -hmm. So common sense is is grossly overlooked in, in, uh, in, in success of anything. I was, a ter I mean, I did very well at, as an accountant very quickly in a public accounting environment, not because I was a good accountant. The truth is I was a terrible accountant, terrible. The, what I was great at and why I succeeded and got promoted uh, to partner very, very quickly is because I knew how to get new clients. And I learned that from a common sense standpoint, I'm looking around, you know, in the middle of the night, everybody's trying to get an audit done. And, you know, this is not what I want. What What are these people doing? Let's, let's take a couple steps back. Why are these 15 people sitting in a room trying to get this audit done for the client? And, you know, do I want to do this next week? What are they really doing this for? They're doing it for money. They're making the client look good. 
well, what if I just go get another client on top of this and put all these schmoes to work and continue to do it? It's just common sense. And I'm not patting myself on, on the back over that. You know, and I don't think I'm unusually intelligent. I know I'm not, actually. I just think I apply common sense to everything. I think you're very smart. Number three is time. Mm. And I hear people over and over and over again. We just got off of a conference call, Jill and I, with a group of people who said, I don't have enough time. And you know what? You, this is the one thing you have control over mm -hmm. in your life. And if you don't look at that, that like you have control over your time, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. How many times have you heard people say, I have two little kids. I don't have any time to work out. I've got, I, are you kidding me? If there were 28 hours in a day, I could get, that's all BS, mm -hmm. all of it. You have complete control over how you use that 24 hours. That's your number three is time. Yeah, Just time. time. Okay. It's interesting. Very interesting. And I don't mean you need the time to go about doing this to be successful. Mm. I need You need to change in your head that this is the thing that you're going to do. You're making the time. <clears throat> yeah. You're removing something Yeah, else. Jack, but I've got a job and I've got bills and I've got... Uh, this uh, spouse of mine, she's, you know, she's... That the, it's not important. She, that's right. It's not then, important. Then you know what? You assigned your time to somebody else mm -hmm. and you're making it real convenient to not go out and do what you want to do. I love that. We had the 4 a.m. club. It's probably still floating around. There were a bunch of people that were logging on in Discord in our online community at the same time, about 4 a.m. for all of them, whatever time zone they were in. They're like... Apparently, I'm not the only one up. No, you're not. And here comes another one. And they're all chatting. And they kind of call themselves the 4 a.m. club. I'm like, good for you guys. They were up working from 4 to 6 a.m. Then they started their day, got their kids up and, and fed and to school. And then they went to work and they came home and they did it again. And guess what? Those guys are successful. Well, Jack, you guys have a choice over your time. Why are you doing this silly podcast? I'll tell you why. I'm not doing this podcast to try to get more subscribers in Land Academy. I'm, that's not why I'm doing it at all. I'm doing it because I'm trying to find people like these two engineers to be my business partners in the future so we can do land deals together. Yeah. They might need money. I might need money. They might need expertise. I might need their, let's say they're in Florida. I don't know a lot about Florida. Buying and selling land there is not something that's on my list. But mm -hmm. if I got a good deal in Florida, maybe I can call them. Maybe they're in New Jersey. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I want intelligent business partners in our tiny little 500 person group so that we can do stuff together that's why i spend an hour and a half doing this podcast with uh with her <laughs> <laughs> i was waiting to see what you were gonna call me <laughs> i was like oh 30, thing, 30 things ran through with, my head <laughs> with sunshine i was like waiting for what are you gonna do <laughs> oh wait our disneyland <laughs> <laughs> with humility listen to toi humility you're never gonna hear the end of that oh no next heated debate you and i get in i'm gonna say humility <laughs> <laughs> one gonna, word and i'm gonna go not today <laughs> <laughs> and to which she's gonna say something like this is not my first time she's gonna say self-preservation <laughs> serenity now <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Let's take a look at one of our favorite land acquisitions from our weekly Thursday member webinar. All right. So we are at Herbert's Deal. We are in Rockdale County, Georgia, four acres. Uh, offer price, 100000 bucks. Thank you very much. Thanks we can sell it for 200 to 300 Love those numbers. You only do one of those a month and there's your million. <laughs> uh, let's see. Alive. Yep. Access. Yes. Other industrial. Hi. Uh, zoned industrial flat, no FEMA, no wetlands. Seller's a developer out in Texas. Um, this is in Georgia. It says there are five live springs deep underground. And about six years ago, the county designated part of the front portion of the land as a watershed area. Not does not show up on the wetlands. Uh, one agent thinks for a thousand dollars. Walk the property. Notice the third of the property's usage is questionable due to a drainage ditch and stormwater pipe converging onto the property about midway through the left side. Across the street is a big concrete structure that shoots water into a pipe underground and it flows out onto this property. Wow. He does not think there's possible contamination from the neighbors. 
Uh, agent number two thinks 400,000 bucks. It will sell fast. Walked it, loved it, thinks it's pretty flat and doesn't see the drainage being a big issue because any developer can overcome that pretty easily uh, considering it's not an easement from another eight neighbor. Thinks we should get an Alta survey showing the utilities, sewer lines, water lines. If we don't not get a survey, you know, I do these commercial deals. Those guys usually do them themselves. If we do not get a survey, the title comes back clean. He doesn't see the property being fully developable. Um, and the, he does not see being available. The agent does a great job marketing their properties, full service. Number three thinks 260 retail did not walk it. Whew. I always go with the lowest, well, right? First, then you know you're okay no matter what. This is not a typical Land Academy deal, mm-hmm. and you did a fantastic presentation here. Mm-hmm. You've dug in really, really well. There's a lot of variables here. This is a situation where I would sign, probably sign the, the purchase agreement and open escrow contingent, upon, and I would give yourself 90 days to, to uh, dig deep and to find out what's really going on here and what's possible. Mm-hmm. Even better yet, and I know it complicates things, it would be great to have the seller allow you to market it, uh, you know, equitable title kind of thing and market it and see if you get somebody that, to pay 400000 bucks before you actually buy it. There's a lot of water issue variables here. And uh, the last thing you want is to go into this deal thinking that you're going to make some money and then find out that there's some type of contaminant, EPA type. I, know. I personally like these deals. However, they go slow. No matter who is doing that, Alta, all that stuff, um, it's going to take 60, I six say, days. I would say 90. That's to say, you know, and- there's a sign on it. Well, now that shed some new light on the information on the dig deep into this and i'll I'll, just for everybody else's benefit i don't like deals like this at all it's not a land academy deal that said people make tons of money people do industrial deals all deal land deals like this so you know i i don't like the potential of the epa situation and and uh i think there's other way easier ways to make a hundred thousand bucks to two hundred thousand dollars that's just my opinion Herbert's going to go. We know Herbert from a uh, career path in the mm-hmm. past. Um, he's going to do what he needs to do anyway, but this is not my favorite kind of deal. I wouldn't do it. Would you? I would. Well, I, well, now I can see it first. I'm going to go look at this listing and see what happened. You know, did the guy dig in for a certain amount of money and look at this, what's that on the property? So this honestly changes it for me a little bit, seeing that it was for sale once. This is available. This is available. Um, what's going on here? There's a lot of questions. Yeah. You know, there's a lot. You know what? And you know what? If you haven't already, Herbert, I don't, you probably did. Did you search for the listing by just popping the mm-hmm. property address in? That's going to and see what how long it was for sale. This is good. 2018, $135,000. Small little property. So, mm-hmm. It, it, like always, these industrial deals, I have more questions than I do uh, answers. And honestly, if we were serious about doing this, I would ask Joe to send someone on our team just to find out what's going on. Talk to these people. It looks pretty healthy. Mm-hmm. Where are we outside of Atlanta? Ah. Oh. So, oh. This is good. I mean, I, I would not walk away from this. I would put it under contract and just go to phase two due oh. diligence. Okay. I don't know what this is. So, I... I'm liking that area. I think like I've I like we looked at stuff around Conyers recently. So yeah. um all right. I think it's a great area too. I would keep pushing on this and keep going, but I'm it's almost like I'm trying to I'm just used to cover my butt on every little thing. And I honestly just depending how it went before the sale thing, that would that's what that's what I would use to decide it. Seriously. If it was for sale for three years and yeah. no one made any offers and everything, then I'm like, okay, then I'm not gonna do it. But if the guy dug in at a certain price, he wouldn't go below 500,000 and now he's changed his mind. Now I might do something different. I'm like, oh, okay, now it's time. Let's take another question posted by one of our members on the Land Academy Discord online community. Again, if you want a sneak peek, go to landacademy.com, it's free. Okay, Ed wrote, hello everyone, I just joined yesterday. I've done one mailing, 3,200 units, through another coaching class and I'm starting to get some calls, which is exciting. However, I really felt like there were some things lacking in the other course. We have a theme today. We do. Yeah. Yeah, It's actually a huge theme in Discord. Oh, like where did you come? Where did you come from? And it's a huge theme in the people who are joining Land Academy. 
they're That's... defecting from substandard groups. And if you're one of those people, let us know. Yep. If you're brand new at this, go to those other groups. No. <laughs> I'm serious. It's okay. It's all right. We know. All right. Um, uh, what was one of the one which is the community. One of which was lacking. Um, I'm very excited to take part here as well as learning and supporting each other. Good. They're happy with our community. Is the point. This is the part I love. Okay. I've been doing various real estate things for 10 plus years. 10 years of real estate experience. I can do that on everything I say? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Humility. <laughs> That's right. That's my line. I know. You need a line. Nobody uses for me. It sounds like we have Tourette's. We're going to start doing this all, all, all the time. I'm just going to start learning how random. You can't use my lines, though. Sorry, it just felt appropriate. <laughs> all right. Ooh, okay. So um, I have about... Sorry, Ed. <laughs> so I have about 60 SFRs and multifamily doors, as well as three Airbnbs. My wife and I have also done several house flips. This is amazing. I love when people Extremely, have all this experience. This, I, I would call this extensive these like experience things. in real estate. We've done all these too, and I suck. Yeah, you're going to love I know. Buying and selling land is the easiest thing in the world. That's right. You're going to go, this is, this is how easy it is to make 100 grand? What yeah. the heck was I doing? Yep. I mean, yep. There you go. <laughs> um, all of that has been interesting, but I'm looking to simplify my life. Welcome to the club. And this really makes, uh, and this really seems like a good way to do that. I am committed to make this work. Good luck to all. Oh, I love it, Ed. You're totally in the right place. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Two good new members that are going to smash it. Oh, sure. yeah. And make the group better. Yeah. Including Jill and I. Yeah. Today's second topic, how to avoid land due diligence paralysis. This is directly, this topic is directly out of yesterday's career path presentation by Joe. Yes. We have the six A's. Yes. That's, we have stage one due diligence and stage two. The six, yes. here's a summary, the six A's. They are access. Property's gotta have access. You can hopefully drive right up to it or some version of that. Every property's got some version of access, including I need a helicopter to get to get it, get to it. We have, have extensive experience in both, and as do our, everybody in our group. So access, alive. You can't buy a piece of property from a dead person. Affordable, which is my A word, a uh, word starting with an A, meaning the deal works. Mm -hmm. I'm going to buy it for 30000 bucks and sell it for 60000 I'm not going to see something to make it worth 30000 that's just either common sense mm -hmm. affordability attributes super cool stuff around it it's close to the grand canyon it's close to las vegas it's uh in midtown manhattan some amazing attribute mountain views tall pine trees it's got an old mobile home on it that's a great attribute that's four acreage acreage so that's my a word of uh trying to Keep in forefront in your mind about its size. In general, not always, in general, bigger is better. 40 acres is better than 20 acres. And finally, adjacent. What's next to it? Is it a piece of farmland that's sur uh, surrounded by other pieces of farmland? Is it a piece of farmland that's surrounded by a brand new subdivision? These are all really positive things that uh, the property that you're about to buy, that you're checking to see if you're gonna buy, if it's, uh, you know, if that's prevalent, if it's a property that's got a bunch of other incredibly vacant property adjacent to it, that's for sale for for a very small amount of money, let's say you know, adjacent, it really, really, really matters. You, adjacent will tell you what pro, uh, what's the logical outcome is for the property that you're buying. Mm -hmm. It's likely going to be what's happening with the adjacent property. And if the answer is nothing, it's vacant, that's probably how your property is going to stay. It just it hasn't caught the the uh, progress hasn't caught it yet. Well, you know what I think of an easy example is hmm. There's 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 ranch lands where you see five acre ranch, five acre ranch, five acre ranch, five acre ranch, and then one five acre in the middle. We all know what's going on there, but um, but then you have 
a paper subdivision in Riverside or whatever county, you know, out in wherever, and there's just nothing that's adjacent where you're like, okay, this, this isn't gonna happen. Sure, I can see there's platted roads, but they don't even exist, you know, that kind of a thing. So, but the topic is really about avoiding this due diligence paralysis. So what the heck are we talking about? We see this at times. People come in and they they get one phone call and they're the first thing they do, the call comes back, the first thing they do is race to their desk to look it up. They got all the information, they're all excited, like this guy liked my offer, let's go look it up. And then they go, they go down the rabbit hole and they spend, I don't know, a couple hours on this, and then we start digging there, and then we start digging here. And 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 then they're like, I don't know if I want to buy it. I don't know if I want to buy it. And this maybe this is Monday. Maybe this is Sunday. I'm gonna say Sunday. The call came in Sunday morning, not kidding. And they're still by Thursday, when our weekly call rolls around, they're still not sure if they're gonna buy it. So they bring it up to us. And in 30 seconds, I mean, the, we'll pull it right up and go, oh, I already got a feeling, you know? That's how fast it can and will be and should be for you. Here's what I want you to do, because the, in the right in the title here, it says how to avoid this problem. Mm-hmm. What I want you to do when a deal comes back, right. I don't care if you're brand new or if you have a, a 50 years of experience doing yeah. this, I want you to look at the money. Does this fit the profile of what I'm trying to buy? Right. I, like the Land Academy program said, determined that my sweet spot is to buy for 30 and sell for 60. So I went out and trolled, like the Land Academy program says, figured out the markets and tested and yes, the markets support what I'm trying to do, send a bunch of mail out, <clears throat> property came back. In the first 15 seconds and looking at it, the way that we do on the Thursday call, it supports that. Mm-hmm. It supports that. I'm going to buy for 30 and sell for 60. And so now you pr- you pr- uh, proceed down the due diligence path with mm-hmm. the other, because that's affordability. We got it. That's one of the A's. Check. The other five A's, is it, uh, does it, um, you know, Have is access. it is access Are they adjacent? Are they alive? You know, you just need to start to look for reasons why. Make sure you're not smart. I don't want you to look for positive stuff. I want you to start to build your case about why that, what is going to happen in these six A's that doesn't support, that's going to stop you from accomplishing your 30, making 30 grand. True. And and what I see uh, new people doing is trying to justify True. the $60,000 price when the, or try to just, if the person comes back instead of 30,000 that you offer, it comes back and says, I'll take 50. They start to see what's, what's in these other A's that I can make make it worth fifty thousand dollars, and the fact is, you can't. Brilliant. Because it doesn't work. The financial piece doesn't work. So just stop right there, and open the next letter, and send out the next mailer. Exactly. That's the Land Academy way. We have people in Career Path, which is our advanced uh, program, packed full of people in Career Path that are screamingly successful doing this another way. But what I'm saying is this is our way. And I and I love career path because I learned their way too and their justification for it. And we always come back out, Jill and I, for whatever reason, we're on the same page about this. Not, it's not everything that we're on the same page about. Like humility. Unchanging. <laughs> That's going to be a ring through the halls of this house for months. Humility. Exactly. <laughs> I would be doing something. And he's going to be on the phone. And <clears throat> humility. <laughs> Look, the money's got to work. That's why we're here. Yeah. You can't squeeze a plot out of a turnip. That's what I see people doing and doing to do. And then they get per- paralyzed. I know. And no wonder. So would I. That's the I thing. I can't squeeze $20,000 out of a buy for 30 you and know, sell for 60. You know, here's this is so good. This is, this is perfect. What I was originally going to talk about is like, hey, you know, let's be smart about this. You know, how to avoid the da- diligence paralysis. Where you, The way you're coming out is the right way. And I'm going to tell you what I was going to say. But now, and I like your way better. I was going to say, hey, and I've done this. Have a timer on your desk. Make sure you don't spend any more than five minutes on a property. You know, there's little things like that you can do that will help you along that way. Like don't spend more than five minutes. Look at 
10 deals at one time. You know, there's lots of things, batch out your time and be smart about this. So you don't, you know, come up for air and realize, oh, I just lost two days and I don't think I'm gonna buy it kind of thing. Cause the bigger picture is what he said. You're not thinking about this right. You're only, um, the, the cure for this, Jill just said it in the middle of the sentence, the entire and complete cure for, for uh, due diligence paralysis to look at 10 deals at once. So in a perfect world, you're going to send a mailer out. It never happens this way, but uh, this is a theory. You're going to get 10 offers back and they're going to stare at, stare at them on your desk. This is a theory. It doesn't happen this way at all. And you're going to take, you're going to look at all of them. You're going to give yourself, set your little timer. You're going to give yourself 30 minutes. So you're going to look at all 10 deals. You're going to pick the best two. Not going to lie to yourself or justify it somehow. One of them, probably out of ten, is going to smack smack you in the face. Like, oh my God, are you kidding me? Yeah, what I better I get this thing under contract really fast because I can't find anything wrong with it. Mm -hmm. And then look at the second one. Ah, uh, I get it. I, you know, I'm going to call this person back because I actually do think it's a good deal, but I might have to shave ten grand off of it. And then deal number three. Hmm. I don't know. I might call him back because I need to shave twenty. Or and then four through six are doesn't have access. Doesn't not person's not alive. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't like the uh, in the run through the six days, and that's how due diligence is supposed to go. Mm -hmm. There are it's very natural for us as humans, and for um, people that are have been exposed to real estate through their parents' house transaction over the years to make all 10 of those deals work somehow. And what you're doing is now taking the time to look at something that's never gonna happen instead of spending time on your next mailer. Not only that, the risk. Or, or closing the deal number one and two at the prices that you want, and then okay. it's concentrating on selling them on the other side. You know, my other way to avoid this is, um, which I, is my other favorite way, have so many deals coming at you, just send out mails like a send out offers like a crazy person if you really want to get good at due diligence and and uh always make really great decisions be reckless like he calls it reckless mailing reckless mailing and have so many deals on your desk you can't possibly do them all i got 50 like this whole week i got 50 between all my phone calls and the things we got on the phone and i got i got six in the mail and it's like I don't need, I, there's no way I could possibly take down these deals. I have to only be very strategic. I have to pick the best ones and I don't have that much time. I'm a one man show. That's the other how could way you, too. How could you fail under that situation? You, you can. can't, you can't fail. You cannot fail. In fact, what you're going to do is get good at, uh, on discord, probably find some other people in the group no, to I, shove those deals off on yeah. so that they can do them. You can, you can take a piece of it somehow uh -huh. and you save the ones, the best ones for yourself. Uh-huh. There you go. Individualizing these deals and trying to see something that's not there. By the way, that was my big bottleneck when I started. I'm going to do every deal that comes back. Hmm. I'm going to figure it out. And I learned the hard, very, the hard way that that's just not the case. So we're making this sound really easy tonight, today. It takes um, a mental change. It took a huge mental change. And in my case, it took me failing at a few deals to realize mm -hmm. I'm only going to, I'm only, you have to, you have to buy them so cheap to make sure that you can resell them for what you want and then just pick those and that's it. You know what's interesting? No skin off my nose. I can just send more mail out. I want to ask you this, like, cause I'm still perplexed by this. We have some, we have, you know, the majority of our group is brilliant. Um, and I, I'm shocked at sometimes when I'm like, God, these, some of these people, why is this so hard to understand? Like, it's, it's almost like I'm saying you're better than that. Move on. Mm -hmm. But that's really what I'm saying. This deal's beneath you. Knock it off. Do you really want to work that hard for two grand? When so And when you have two grand of a spread, you know, anything, one little thing goes wrong, now you don't make any money. Let's not do that. So, so I, what do you think it is? Do you have any? Yeah, I think it's the seventh day. Oh, afraid. This is the formal announcement. The six A's have now become seven A's. Is it really formal? Yep. Oh, okay. It's now seven A's. All right. Which you, you know came what? up with it, by the way. It's I didn't mean to totally, steal his thunder. He did it. It's totally, I completely understand. Nobody's judging you and we've all been there. That's yeah. why we have groups like Land Academy. So 
you know, you can go into Discord and say, I am this, I have a deal and, and it's the seventh day. It's not the deal. I'm afraid. Oh, brilliant. That's brilliant. Thank you. We started and so then four. everybody, watch what happens in Discord if you do that. Yeah. Everyone's going to help you, mm -hmm. starting with us, Jill and I. You know why? Because it's like, I think this is a great deal. Mm -hmm. I have massive concerns about my confidence level in uh, making a decision here. Fantastic. I mean, that's that's humility. Mm -hmm. That's the first step in, in becoming a incredibly successful at whatever you're doing is, you know, you're right. This ties right into that. Mm -hmm. If you have some humility about it, you're not too proud. Yeah, I'm, I'm stuck on this. Yeah. And I, I need somebody who's got 30 eyes. years of experience yeah. to tell me it's okay. People do that with me of deal funding all the time. I know it. They love it. They're submitting it. Like, I, I really think this is great. I'm, I'm you know, I, I want to do the deal with somebody else because I'm afraid. I love that. Uh-huh. Partners really save each other from themselves. Uh-huh. Jill saves me all the time. And not just as a life partner, more than in a, in a real estate situation. Thank that's you. just, that's what it's about. We, we both do. Thanks for saving me from myself, humility. <laughs> I love it. Let's take a look at another one of our favorite land acquisitions from our weekly Thursday member webinar. All right, Evans County, Georgia, 5.43 acres. There's, it's a house. There's the house. I see that. Love it. Excellent. This is awesome. Accepted offer 90000 The chicken's out for 140 Alive, yes. Uh, Jason, there's other industrial commercial property nearby. It's on five acres in the house. Majority of it's wetlands. There's a pond and a creek. Oh, okay, got it. Um, SFR built in 1950, 1,300 square feet, three bedroom, two bath, basically a mobile home, free and clear. Has tenants paying seven fifty a month and needs a new roof. What? This is uh, that's easy to yeah, check. Exactly. This is like now it's the easiest deal in the world yeah. to see if you want to do. Totally opposite to the last one. Zilla says it's worth one twenty one. That's a good start. We scroll down and see if it was ever listed for fast sale for me. Just humor me. Go on. All right, hold on a moment. I see some stuff. Yep. What is this? Even though it says off market, it was listed because um, I wrote this in nineteen fifty. There you go. So it was sold in 2012. They listed it. I'm I'm actually out now because if they too. couldn't sell it for 59, I'm not going to spend 90. So it was pre-COVID, but and it's, it's estimates here. It's too close to your number. If the, if this was 200,000 bucks, I'd really relook at it. Yeah, I might I might give them 50. I mean, they were going to take 59. Mm -hmm. I'd go back with this information and say, hey, 50 is good. I would buy this for 50. Yeah. See. See the power of scrolling down, Jack? <laughs> <laughs> wow. What? You. All right. Cool. I hope that's the right. You know, this were fun. Let's just say 794. 794. Let's look across the street here. Okay. Well, 5.43 acres. If we look at the listing, let's confirm that too. It's a 40 acre property. One yeah. second. This is the property just adjacent and north. Someday, maybe we should do a, a Jill call and a Jack call. Let's see how we do things a little bit differently mm -hmm. looking at the deal. We could do the LA ladies. What'd you do this deal call? What do you think would be different? Oh, it'd be a lot different. <laughs> what would happen? We get a lot more. We get a lot of information. I don't know. We just look at things different. That's why we're partners. I think. True. Okay. I have an idea. Go ahead. You could just go back to the Zillow. Let me confirm it's the right property with the address and the size. Then I'm going to go just look at some comps. 205. It's a much larger piece of property. So this makes me feel a little bit better. This is uh, right in the area and it's kind of fallen down. So at 50, I love it. Go ahead, Joe. Okay. Do you have Zillow back open with the original address to that for me? I think this is a property. I close it. That's the prop. Oh, wait, no, that's not it. Where's the property? Oh, wait, it's right there. That's it. We're on the Starlink. So I'm trying to be kind of conservative for how many windows I have open. Mm. Go ahead. This is it. Okay. So I want to make sure it is the right property. Oh, you know what? Yep. Okay. So I'll close that. Um, going up in value just because of stuff. Um, portion of the estate. I love that. But I'm not loving. I just can't do 90. There's no way. Yeah, now, no. My, now my 50 is 40. On a cap rate basis, Carl's right. There's no. Mm -hmm. It does not support. The rent doesn't support the purchase price. So nope. Sorry, Herbert. I would not do that deal. I would take that information that Joe found on the MLS, send it back to him and say, hey. Well, you paid 20 for it. I'd tell him that. You paid 20. I'll give you it 40. for 60. None of that worked. Yeah. Yep. 
they're 40. jumping up and down and at I 90. would buy it at 40. Yeah. All right. So hello, Jason. Um, yeah, we're all saying the same thing. Yes. Good luck, Herbert. <laughs> it's good. Uh, Julia, you have something in inspirational to share? I actually sat down without one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're so organized today. Oh, we're on it. Like, yeah, you know, uh, I guess I just want to touch. I guess I'm just going to touch on the humility thing one last time because now it's really hitting. It's really kind of funny that that's our whole theme today. But I don't care who you are, how smart you are. You know, we have, and like I said, we have, there's multiple PhDs in Land Academy. Yeah. And it, it's, it's, it's amazing to me. And some of the what I really love is some of these smartest people with the PhDs are the first ones to say I don't know anything about this, um, and I and that's probably why they are so smart. They really know themselves. They know what they're good at. They know what they're not good at, and they know what to. They don't have any um, ego uh, mm -hmm. issues to say I suck at this, so I hired it out done I don't I'm just, I'm no skin off my nose because this is the prize you know over here so I guess uh humility I'm this is I will forever be working on that and I think all of us should be you know you're never yeah. gonna be I'm perfect because then you don't have humility <laughs> you're gonna stand there by yourself when you say that yeah oh I've got <laughs> this I know exactly <laughs> who I am and what I'm good at I know how to do everything great yeah. well it's good to know you yeah <laughs> You did it. There you go. Congratulations. <laughs> what about you, Jack? What do you want to? I'm gonna drive this point home, just like you. I, from the tip of your to the top of your head to the bottom of your toes, you need to uh, devote and commit to the point of of um, idiocy. Succeed at whatever you're you're trying to do. And, and my, maybe it's buying and selling land. It has been for Jill and I. I don't know, maybe it's uh, medical research, but whatever it is, you gotta, it, and it's, I feel that I think the internet, <clears throat> excuse me, with the prevalence of the internet has dissipated a lot of that. Otherwise really well-intentioned people are, <sighs> they're distracted by what their, um, what, what their friends in college are doing instead of actually putting their nose down and doing stuff. So we had that in our uh, generation, a version of that. All we ever heard our grandparents say is, turn that damn TV off. Your mind's going to turn to mush. Well, the internet's like television on steroids for that. Hmm. So just turn all that stuff off, all that noise, just and do what you, do what you think is going to make yourself a, a better person for you and, and whoever is around in your life. Thank you very much. Join us next Wednesday for another interesting episode. Buy land cheap, sell for more on the internet. We, we are, are Jack, Jack and Jill. Jill. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property. We hope you find our content valuable and we appreciate your support. If you have not already, please check out our channel and hit the subscribe button. And your comments and suggestions help us uh, to create the content you're here for. Hitting the like button helps to support our channel's algorithm and gauge your interest for future shows. 